Where the Lonely Ones Roam by Glimmer Glanger Read by X Manhater Where are we? Adora asked the next time she woke, after Catra managed to get her to drink some of the broth she'd made. There was no food as such, but Catra could, apparently, hunt well enough. She'd managed to catch a few small animals, and she'd put the abandoned pots to use. Wouldn't you like to know? Catra said, because she didn't know, really. Swift wind grazed in the meadow outside of the little hut, but he didn't understand the way people named the land, so he hadn't been helpful when asked for their location. Katra, Adora started, almost managing a look of determination for a moment, before the exhaustion took her once more and she passed out. Katra snorted, covered her up, and went outside to sit in the sunshine. I should be dead, Adora said the next time she woke up as Katra stepped back inside the hut after going on a hunt. Adora had rolled onto her back. She stared up at the ceiling, looking, no doubt, at the rough repair job Katra had done to keep the rain out. Katra snorted, setting down the rabbit she'd skinned. That's certainly what your friends thought. Adora coughed, the sound still terrible and racking. Katra filled a cup with water and carried it over to the blankets, grabbing Adora and pulling her to sitting bringing the cup to her mouth and making her drink. She could feel the rattle in Adora's lungs against her hand and the heat that radiated out of Adora's skin. Adora drank a little and then slouched sideways against Katra, her head heavy on Katra's shoulder where she panted unevenly for breath. Katra stared at the far wall, her own heart beating suddenly much faster. She stayed there frozen even after Adora fell back into unconsciousness. I have to go, Adora said, when she was barely strong enough to push up onto her elbows. Katra flicked a glare at her. The door's right there. Adora stared at her, wide eyes just starting to focus clearly, a frown stretched across her face. Katra, she said softly, almost pleading. This isn't the time for games. I have to go back and finish what I started. It's the only way to... The only way to what? Katra stood, pacing around the small hut. The only way to save the world? She yanked the door open and gestured out into the meadow. I don't know if you noticed, but the world is still here. It seems to be doing okay. Adora managed to sit, her arms trembling with the strain of holding her body up. She raised her chin a little, stubborn and stunning, and... And Katra gritted her teeth together so hard they ached. You don't understand, she said. It's Shira's duty to heal the world, to... Katra made a sharp sound. Not a hiss. She never hissed. Shadow Weaver and her muzzle had beat that out of Katra long ago and snapped. That's stupid, Adora. If the people want the world healed, they can do it themselves. Adora narrowed her eyes and braced, trying to rise further and falling back all at once, racked with coughs. Katra glared at her and then fetched a glass of water, her claws scratching the glass for just a second before she forced them back. There's so much damage, Adora said between coughs, looking up at Katra like she was being unreasonable. Then it'll take a lot of time to fix, Katra said. It'll be good for those friends of yours to get their hands dirty for once, instead of waiting around expecting someone else to sweep in and handle all their problems. Adora glared up at her. That's not fair, she said. The princesses fought, Katra snarled. The princesses hid, safe in their towers until they couldn't anymore, and even then they would have kept hiding, except you showed up and made them do something. They only cared about protecting themselves for years and years. It wasn't like... How many villages did they watch get destroyed? Katra demanded, feeling her tail lash around her legs wishing she could make it stop, thinking about smoke and the burn of ashes in her lungs, half-memories obscured by time and whatever Shadow Weaver had done to her head over the years. How many people were acceptable losses to the Horde, as long as it kept their precious palaces and shiny rocks safe? Katra, Adora said, and Katra scoffed, flexing her hands in and out. At least the Horde is, was, honest about what it was she said, turning aside and stalking towards the door, and out under the clear sky, where the sun beat down on her shoulders, before she reached the cool shadows of the woods. 
Petra returned with a hard knot settled in her chest, because who knew what idiot scheme Adora would get up to if left alone for too long. Catra thought about staying away long enough for Adora to drag herself across the floor, but if she hurt herself again, it would just mean more work for Catra in the long run. Adora was sitting with her back against the wall when Catra came back. The blankets were tangled around her legs. I'd like my sword back, she said, not looking directly at Catra. I'd like you to pass out again, Catra said, moving to prepare the birds she'd managed to catch while out in the woods. I'll get it back. It doesn't matter where you hit it, Adora said, and for a moment she sounded like she did on the battlefield, so self-righteous and haughty. Catra flattened her ears and said, taking some pleasure in the words, It's gone. Your sword. Destroyed. What? Adora sounded shocked. Catra didn't spare her a look. You're lying. Catra shrugged. She wondered if the princesses would try to reforge the broken blade. It seemed like the kind of thing they'd do, wasting their time hoping for some savior to come fix everything for them instead of just going out and fixing things themselves. Sure, she said, because I lie to you so much, don't I? She listened to Adora breathe loudly for a few moments. Adora said, finally, but without the sword, there can't be Shira. Katra hummed, frowning over her cooking. Guess not, she said. When she finished the soup and brought over a bowl, Adora was sitting with her head bowed, her hands clenched in her lap, her shoulders shaking. Katra hesitated and then placed the bowl beside Adora's hip. You need to eat this, she said, and left the hut to the sound of Adora's soft sobs. You can't keep me here forever, Adora said, almost a full day later. They hadn't spoken in the intervening hours, not even when Katra strolled in around the midnight hour and curled up below the blankets on her little patch of dirt floor. Adora raised her chin, her eyes still a little red and puffy around the edges. Katra stared at her, remembering Adora's weight in her arms, the weak beat of Adora's pulse, the rattle of her breath, her mother's. She abruptly looked away. Keep you here, she said, testing the words, frowning at the feel of them in her mouth, and gesturing at the door with as much restraint as she could manage. There's the door, she said. Your horse is outside. I'll carry you to him if you want. Swiftwind is here? Adora looked, delightfully taken off balance. I thought I only imagined that in the fever. Nope. Katra pushed the door open. How do you think I got you here? Hey, she called out into the field. Swiftwind was trying to talk to some squirrels up in the trees around their clearing. Come talk to Adora. The horse arrived with quickness, ducking his head through the door as Catra slipped out. Hey, you're looking better, he said, and Catra left them to it, stalking off into the woods where she wouldn't have to watch Adora leave. Catra went back to the hut when the rain started. She'd never cared very much for being wet. She was surprised to find Swiftwind hanging out under the boughs of the largest tree, glittering in the rain. Adora sat in her blankets, frowning down at her lap. Catra stared at her for a moment. Swiftwind says you saved my life, Adora said quietly. Catra snorted. Well, if the horse says it. And that you took care of me for days and days while I was unconscious. Why? Catra picked at the crumbling wall of the hut, her claws finding a crack to widen. She thought about Adora standing at that ridiculous altar, power radiating through her, burning her up from the inside. And she thought of Adora, hanging from her fingertips from another ruin. And she thought of sleeping, curled up at Adora's feet in their bunk back in the hoard. Her claw cracked, snapping badly against the stonework, and she bit her tongue at the sudden pain of it. Katra, Adora said, a note of question in her voice. I just did, she said, shrugging. It seemed like a good idea at the time. She turned away then, feeling Adora watching her. You must be hungry, 